All right, I want to uh, warmly welcome you to this uh, first uh, uh, orientation week discussion group. Uh, this is the um, uh, Pasteur uh, group. Tomorrow will be the Jenner group. So if you're watching the recording, just to clarify um, which group this is, the course is module A3. It's part of a larger survey scholar initiative, and this is a module focused on analysis and interpretation of vaccination coverage of survey indicators. Um, so the discussion group round, ground rules to kick us off, for those of you who attended the pre-course briefing, you've seen this and done this before. If you could type into the chat window uh, the uh, city and country uh, where you are connecting from. So for me, it is Geneva, Switzerland, yeah. and uh, for Robert uh, Ninsen, we can see your name when you type into the chat window. So just the uh, uh, city and country will, uh, will do. And uh, I can see you know, Pakistan, France, Belgium, India, Cameroon, Sweden, Kenya, Nigeria, USA, pa Pakistan, USA, Egypt, Nigeria, uh, yeah, South Sudan, um, India, Switzerland, uh, the UK. All right, so Ethiopia, I'm trying to pick out the ones we haven't said yet. So Gambia, the Gambia, Tanzania. Uh, okay, what a wonderful, wonderful group. We're right now 129 participants. We have 200 people registered for today. So let's get started. Um, we are conscious that time is your most precious resource and we will strive to make these discussion groups as well as every other aspect of the course as efficient and, and effective as possible. We will strive, in other words, not to waste your time and we ask you to do the same with respect to this course team. Very pleased and uh, quite honored to introduce uh, the Survey Scholar team. Um, first of all, this is the full list of uh, subject matter experts who've contributed uh, and supported this uh, Survey Scholar initiative. Um, Carolina Danavaro and uh, Dale Roda are actually together with Felicity Cuts. So some of you, if you joined the session early, saw them on the uh, webcam. Um, and I would like to ask them, rather than show uh, still pictures of them, as well as John Magai, it would be lovely to hear uh, from each of you to introduce yourselves to the participants and to say yes, uh, uh, your word of welcome to them uh, uh, for this first uh, inaugural session during orientation week. So I'll unmute um, both of you, and you'll need to unmute yourselves. Uh, uh, so hi again, Carolina Danovaro, probably look bad in the picture and in real life, sorry. Um, here, uh, Dale. Welcome, welcome, we're glad you're here. Yeah, and uh, Felicity here. Hello, everyone. And uh, welcome again. Okay, great. And Carolina, would you like to say a word to the participants uh, as this is the first time we are coming together as a... Uh, a learning community for this module. Um, well, hello again and welcome. And we are happy you made it to this part. Uh, it's always a little tricky the first week trying to figure out scholar, go to training, the WhatsApp group and everything. So um, it will get a little easier. Your um, fellow participants will be helping you. And we will also have former scholar participants helping navigate scholar, the videos, the recordings, etc. So there will be support, just be a little patient with us so that um, because there are many, many participants, we really um, try to accept everybody who was qualified and also that show that would have a use for this training. So maybe we, we went accepting more people than um, than usual, but we'll give it our best try to, to provide you with a still personalized and useful training. So welcome again. Thank you, Carolina. And I think many of you are doing just fine so far. So if you could in the chat, uh, of course, if you're not, then we'll, we'll do everything we can to help you. But I think most of you seem to be doing okay. So if you could say so type in the chat that you are okay, that will reassure Carolina about the uh, uh, numbers who are starting out this course, which I think uh, is wonderful. Now, um, over to you, John. Uh, we briefly saw John Magai on the on the on his uh, webcam, so we'd love to hear from you as well, John. Uh, you're connecting from uh, from Abuja, and we'd love to hear your word of welcome as one of the uh, lead subject matter experts for this module. Okay, thank you, uh, Redam, and uh, hi everybody. It's nice again to meet you. And uh, as I said 
first mid-time we met, uh, congratulations. I think this is the largest group we are hosting. And uh, I'm happy to meet a lot of people uh, from, I think, all over uh, the world. So I look forward to interacting with you and uh, sharing more uh, as, as we move along. So thank you uh, and welcome and hope to interact more. Thank you, John. And I see a few people, um, Kazir Nazir, uh, Antonio Moko, um, uh, Uche Chukwu, Efifi, uh, Moses, Jimate de Barima, Boniface Isindu, uh, and many more are reassuring you, Carolina, that they are doing okay so far. <laughs> yes, uh, of course, the real work will be starting on Monday, but it's already heartening to know that you know, people seem to be surviving through orientation week and hopefully gaining something from it as, uh, uh, as well. So um, we wanted to give you a sense. You, of course, applied um, alone in front of your computer, perhaps late at night. Um, you were then received this letter informing you you were shortlisted and you realized you had to go through this process, um, but you don't necessarily know who else is in this module. So we wanted to try to give you a sense of, uh, 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 of that. To answer this question, you know, based on the application forms, the very long and detailed application forms that you took care to uh, fill out uh, to share some of the, uh, uh, some of the uh, information about who we are together as a survey scholar community for this uh, module. So as you can see, a, little, you know, a quarter of the participants are women, the rest are men. You can see a you know a healthy sort of set of different age ranges here. Uh, many of you uh, in the run up to the course wanted the answer to this question in terms, especially with respect to the selection process. So as you can see, there are very large contingents from a few countries. Uh, first and foremost, Nigeria, India, and Pakistan. Um, but uh, I would like to say that if you are the sole representative from your country, then there's an additional level of responsibility upon your shoulders, which is that your country's performance will be determined by your individual performance. That makes your participation even more valuable and even more important for your commitment to last throughout this uh, six-week uh, marathon. Um, so with respect to the uh, uh, question about gender bias, um, I did not actually check that. I suspect that it's actually con pretty consistent uh, with the uh, percentages with a gender balance in or gender imbalance uh, with respect to applications. So we have some things about, you know, some information here about experience. You can see that um, there is a also a very significant contingent to people with a lot of immunization uh, experience. And this is specifically about immunization experience at the top left. Um, and we'd like to ask those of you who are very experienced and qualified to show indulgence and even beyond indulgence to actually offer support and share your experience and expertise with those of you, with those, those of us who are more junior and less experienced than yourself. Um, at the bottom here, um, you can see that you know, two-thirds have been directly involved in conducting vaccination coverage surveys. But again, that means for, for that for the third who have not, you know, who may be qualified in other kinds of surveys, for example, so we should make no assumptions. Um, that seems to be a very important thing to keep in mind. Again, uh, the openness and the spirit of sharing, um, there's a huge amount of diversity in this course, and we need to keep that in mind. And again, a five on the experience with survey methods is the highest, so you can see a very broad range of levels of experience uh, amongst the, uh, uh, the people who are shortlisted. So uh, let me just try to fix, so the audio breaking is probably not due to um, my side, but something that's happening between me and you, Robert, over the, um, uh, internet, as you're the only one reporting this problem, we'll be keeping an eye on such problems. They can be really frustrating, but that's just part of this new medium, and we will make a high-quality recording available. So, um, analysis of household-based survey data. So, um, you know, see that actually 70% of you have done analysis of household-based survey data, and if yes, were there data from surveys that use complex sampling methods? You can see also two-thirds of those who did, you know, did you have already used these complex survey methods? And um, have you been involved in conducting other household surveys? You can see also the split uh, there. So prior knowledge and use of the uh, WHO vaccination coverage cluster survey reference manual, you can see that 62% uh, of you had a, have actually, um, uh, well, knew about it. So this is, you know, uh, did you know? 
uh, did you know about the uh, reference manual before you you know, applied for this course? And then uh, of those, um, you know, have you used the updated um, vaccination coverage survey uh, manual? And you can see there that there's around a quarter of the uh, shortlisted uh, applicants um, who have who reported having used it. So commitment and organizational support. You can see also five to six hours a week. So that's 34% of you who said you'd be spending that much time. Uh, you can see the actual numbers for the other categories. The only ones I would worry about are the people who said, and there's a small number, but if you said that you could only commit one to four hours, you may want to revise that upward if you want to actually make it through this course. This There will be intense work that you will need to do in order to progress. And there is no there are no shortcuts that we know, that we know of. Um, Right, and then uh, on the right-hand side, this question about supervisors getting supervisors' approval to uh, encourage you to participate in this initiative and to give you perhaps time at work. We see that most of you have very good support from your supervisors, and we would expect that that has that has manifested itself through actually, you know, being allowed to work on the course during work hours, for example, is a great way to you know show that the support is real. Um, this is actually the the first scholar course in which we've had. Uh, less than 30% of participants who've never taken uh, an online course before. So that's quite an impressive uh, number. It means most of you have uh, digital learning experience, which is wonderful. We expect, therefore, that you'll be able to get through orientation faster and keep up with the course, and that technology will not be a barrier to your participation. Um, Two-thirds of you have um, uh, you know, are, are working from a from from a computer. For those of you who only have a tablet or smartphone, we are going to ask you. You probably will need to work to find a laptop or desktop machine, a PC, to actually um, do some of the coursework, especially the work that involves data analysis, preparations of figures, and so on. Um, last but not least, um, this is a question about the software packages that you answered, and you can see uh, together you mentioned 27. Now, there's some overlap between EPI data and EPI info, but obviously this group also has a broad range of experience with many different statistical packages um, that you use or are familiar with. So overall, a very impressive group, and I actually want to turn to, um, to the uh, subject matter experts to ask for their thoughts um, and insights gained from looking, from reviewing this data, and how then um, they will be uh, adjusting how they are approaching this course and how they are going to uh, be sharing and teaching and supporting you uh, throughout. Great. So this is Dale Roto. Welcome again. Uh, this, these are the kinds of slides that I love. It's great to see that there's such a wealth of technical expertise in the class. I'm sure that we'll all be learning from each other. I plan to learn from you as well as the other way around. We're, um, we'll be releasing the data sets for the first exercise for analysts here today or in the next few days, and you can use whatever package you like to do that. So it will be appropriate to use, you know, you could use uh, certainly Stata, SPSS, R, SAS, you might try using uh, Epi Info or Excel. Uh, could could work well as as well. So we're looking forward to uh, all of that. And then uh, yeah, yeah, R will be certainly will be appropriate. So we'll look forward to doing that. I'll, I'll look forward to communicating with those of you who say that you're uh, users of Win COSAS. I'm looking for some old COSAS data sets to reanalyze in Viki, and I would like to compare some output from COSAS and the software you'll be hearing about soon, Vicky. So um, maybe if you're one of those Win COSAS users, if there's anyone out there besides David Kofi, who's the Win COSAS user, uh, and David as well, you can let me know because let's find some data sets and let's do a little uh, work together on that. Let's, there's an opportunity for a collaborative analysis project if you're a COSAS user or if you have some old COSAS output in a filing cabinet, that might work as well. I, I thought, Dale, you might find that slide interesting. I'd love to hear from um, uh, from Carolina, Felicity, and John as well. Yeah, uh, welcome everyone again. I think it's great too that so many people are aware of the new, uh, the updated guidelines from WHO and that uh, a quarter of people have actually used them because that will be wonderful. And for those that take the, the components of um, thinking about interpreting data rather than necessarily crunching the numbers themselves. 
the um, it will be very helpful to get your feedback on what's written in the manual about that, um, about the indicators that are proposed, a lot of the secondary analyses as well as the primary analyses for coverage. So that will that experience will be will be super. And for those that know about the guidelines but haven't yet used them, um, it will also be good to interact with you on on that. Uh, yes, so from the uh, from this distribution of people and experience, uh, I think it's great to learn from each other. Um, again, be patient with each other, and we can learn uh, about the tools that you are using. Somebody mentioned that Tableau as a tool more for visualizations, so that's something that could be interesting for some of the projects, um, if, even for the managers that will have to do some graphs and interpretation and visualizations. So, so it's going to be uh, an intense course, but but we will go together and you will have to do, of course, the, the assignments, but we'll try to do more advanced things as we can. Uh, over to John. Okay, thank you. I think Carole has touched on what I wanted to speak about, and uh, it's basically on uh, something that will not go so much into detail, but I see the wealth of in, uh, knowledge uh, as in terms of visualization, which is a critical component of uh, communicating uh, vaccination uh, coverage data. So uh, we, we will, anybody can use uh, the tool they're comfortable in. Uh, Dale has mentioned this. Uh, it's the, the cost is not limited to one analysis package, although uh, there is a package that can analyze uh, uh, vaccination coverage data, and Dale has mentioned it. Uh, but then, in terms of uh, being able to move to the next level, uh, plot uh, plot uh, the, the information that we have, uh, be able to uh, visualize and share this information to different audiences is 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 a area that is of particular interest and we hope that uh, we as we go on towards the course we'll be able to share more information on how best we can be able to uh, deliver and uh, share information to not just to health uh, personnel but to the general public and to specific audiences thank you great uh, thank you very much. Um, so some uh, some uh, some uh, comments in the um, uh, chat. Uh, Garrett Fox asked if we can add Tableau to that list. It wasn't actually mentioned by any of the uh, applicants, but the question was about specifically statistical uh, uh, analysis for those people who are experiencing technical issues. Unfortunately, um, it is so dependent on what is happening, what can happen anywhere between me, uh, the other uh, organizers, and uh, you, and that means a lot of unknowns and a lot of things we do not have control over um, unfortunately so let's look now at how many are starting the course that's uh, you know we've mentioned there are you know impressive numbers and of course if you've been to the community or if you have been um, you know receiving the flood of email notifications you're well aware of uh, what this volume means during orientation week we uh, believe there you will find that it is you know it can be an incredible experience once you've figured out how to tame the flow of information and make sense of it organize yourself how you're going to manage it but let me first give you the numbers and then let me give you a share a bit of a concern about one uh of these uh, numbers. So first of all, in 10 days, um, 711 people, um, you know, submitted applications for the uh, for this module. Of those, WHO has since selected uh, 424 of them who are shortlisted. And of that number, following the pre-course briefing, in which we really ask you to think about uh, the level of commitment and dedication that this module requires, you are, as of this morning, there were 304 participants in our scholar community. So. You know, keep these numbers in mind. We have managed large courses uh, before, even though not for Survey Scholar. So um, one of the key indicators in terms of how the group is uh, doing and how the group is going to do, uh, but of course, this cannot be counter contradicted, you know, uh, through uh, commitment and dedication to changing these uh, this dynamic. Um, we asked on orientation day one for you to comment on an update. So of course, the barriers to getting to that place where you had to comment was you had to finish onboarding, you had to go through jump through all these hoops, look at these videos, and think about what you were going to say. So 84% of you were able to do that on orientation day one. However, 
on the orientation day two, only 46% of you actually went through the steps in orientation day update uh, two and uh, completed the you know, task, which was again uh, to make a comment on the update. So this, uh, the through these simple tasks, um, we can you know predict or we can assert that um, somewhere between 46% and 84% of you will be actually completing uh, this course. So obviously that's a very wide range. It could be higher than 84%, but it's going to depend on each of you thinking about the commitment for those of you who were attended the pre-course briefing, think about the commitment that you made, not just to the course team, but also to each other, because we will be so focused on how you will be working together, learning from each other, given the vast and wide and deep levels of experience and expertise uh, in the group. You're going to need to, you're going to need each other, and you're not going to need just 84% of your colleagues or 46% of them, but all of them. So I do want you to think about that. And some of the, you know, some of the orientation activities are fairly trivial. But the fact of getting them done tends to be a good predictor for then the ability to do the real work that will be starting on Monday. So that's you know for the presentation about the numbers and to give you a sense of how we are in the first three days behaving as a community and think about your own role at the individual level within that and what you'd like to do about that going forward. Um, so <laughs> there's an interesting dialogue with Robert Ninson about uh, COSES or WinCOSES. Uh, and um, but let's uh, let's keep moving. And in fact, you are encouraged to use the chat precisely in this way. It is entirely acceptable and encouraged to have conversations unrelated to the presentation, as well as you know specific points in relation to what is being presented. Now, um, there is a lot of information here about the different tracks, and I believe. That information has been shared in the pre-course briefing last week, so I'm not going to go through it again because we have more interesting things to do. But if you have not seen, if you did, were not able to attend the pre-course briefing, have not watched the recording, I would encourage you to go do, this, do so now. This will explain how the two tracks are going to work. That in this course you are going to be, everyone is a survey manager unless they are able to qualify as a survey analyst. Now, survey analysts who do not qualify will go back to being survey managers, and we've explained that as well as the schedule that goes with it. So I hope um, this is already clear. If you have any questions, you can look at the slide deck. We have the learning objectives for managers and analysts, as well as the criteria for the qualification assignment. So that should allow you to think about um, you know, whether you will be trying to qualify as an analyst, and that will happen in the first two weeks of the course. Now, um, wanted to emphasize here, I did want to make a stop to review. This is slightly different and improved, so new and improved compared to what we shared with the, with the, during the pre-course briefing. Um, we've clarified when exactly the week two analyst qualifier is happening. We've clarified here that Everyone will be do doing the same week one community assignment, which will be about the baseline knowledge with respect to coverage surveys that you'll need uh, to make it through this uh, module. Now, um, that's the community assignments. Now, separately, what has changed is when looking at the schedule and how we could best optimize the six weeks that we're going to have, given that um, manager analysts won't know that they're analysts until the week three, um, we've had to reshuffle the course. It doesn't change anything for you now. Um, and only those of you who are Salt Scholar alumni will, may, will probably understand what it actually means. But it means that during you will only have one week for peer review, whoops, and one week uh, for re revision, for revising the work that you will have uh, worked on and then peer reviewed in the first five weeks of the course. So that means that the intensity of the course probably will not let up. In courses where we have two or even three weeks for peer review, that you know, we sort of shift gears. But in this case, you can expect uh, a six-week you know, sprint and marathon uh, all combined at the, at the same time. Um, and that is, you know, which means that the dedication and commitment that you've shown in the first during the first three days of orientation, think about how you're going to sustain that effort uh, throughout the coming weeks. So here are some yeah. details. Of, uh, yes. Reda, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, a little bit before, maybe you can keep the uh, that one 
there. Some people are asking about this, the tools. So if you are in the manager track, don't worry too much. You need to know probably Excel and you will be learning it. So it's, uh, I mean, you can still do it. Uh, will there are some tutorials for some graphs in Excel? Uh, you can uh, be doing that. For the people who are analysts, uh, there have been a lot of questions. Basically, you can use uh, any software you're familiar with, any survey, any survey analysis software, as they'll clarify. Of course, that means SAS or Stata or SPSS, R, to name the main ones, EpiInfo. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you will you will notice. So don't don't get nervous now. Um, and it doesn't mean that people who are going to be uh, managers are going to do less work. So don't think that that's uh, the easier uh, of the two. Uh, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, just not not to worry if you don't know a lot of the um, of the uh, analytical packages. You it's not time. This course is not time to learn Stata or SPSS or R any of those. Uh, but if you already use them, you're welcome to continue using that tool. Uh, for the managers, you will, uh, in order to produce some of the work, you may have to learn a new, a few new fun functions in uh, Excel, for example. Um, over to you. Thank you, uh, Carolina. Some other questions. Um, some are easy to answer. So uh, Felicity has already answered that everyone who qualifies the analyst track will get the opportunity to uh, uh, to work in that track. Um, and then uh, I saw a couple of other uh, questions. Uh, PDF slides for each session will be shared in the community. They're actually available already in GoToTraining. Uh, just look in the materials uh, control uh, in the materials panel in your GoToTraining control panel. Um, training or refreshment on Stata? No. Um, that is not the purpose of this course, but there are many good resources available online. Um, how will you know which track you belong to? So asks Umar. So you are a manager unless you decide to qualify and successfully do so as an analyst. Um, so um, is it only through the comments posted that you use to assess completion of the day's task, especially the past two days? No. So um, if you go in Scholar, you click on analytics, you will see the many little um, uh, the many indicators we're using to track your uh, performance and your progress, and you can actually use the analytics uh, to measure how you are doing and figure out where uh, you need to focus your uh, uh, your efforts. Uh, for Tai Wo, you posted a comment, but the, but uh, I can see it. Um, and of course, for people having um, hiccups with data connectivity, we feel for you. So um, do take note of this schedule, write down the deadlines. They're slightly different from what we shared with the pre-course briefing. So do note those differences around the uh, when you need to submit the draft creator project and how long you have for peer review. Now, I want to talk about the support system. So you can see here some of the, the different components and some of them will make sense. Others may not immediately, but you will get to know and hopefully love and appreciate uh, the very many levels of, and layers of support that we're building into this course to help support you. So at the end of the day, yes, it is your dedication and commitment that will win the day. But we also know that we need to be doing everything we can uh, to, uh, you know, to, to, to facilitate this for you. So we're going to share in the community following this, um, uh, this session uh, the office hours for uh, Carolina and uh, Zhang, as well as some other your know, opportunities to connect with them either individually or you know, in small groups where you'll be able to, unlike this format where you know, we run through things and of course you can always go back and look at the recording, but um, it's, these are very intense sessions. Uh, in the uh, During the office hours, you'll be able to connect and maybe take a little bit more time to go over uh, points that you need uh, support with, uh, to discuss your projects or your assignments and so on. Um, now, after this uh, session, you, um, Pasteur, let's say Team Pasteur, are going to be um, participating, invited to the remote coffee. So what is a remote coffee? Uh, you're going to receive an email matching you with someone else in the course. Uh, this is going to be determined randomly. The only criteria is that um, it, is, it is likely to be someone who participated uh, in the same discussion group as you. So absentees, again, may be losing out on this. Now, someone else, not the person you've been matched with, is also going to be matched with you. 
and they're going to receive an email like the one you see on the screen where um, it'll be coming from 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 Carolina or uh, or me and not from Isadora but the message will be the same you have two potential opportunities to connect with um, uh, with uh, people, other participants in the course. Now, one of the key points is that one, we ask you to respond, to follow up quickly and respond quickly as well. But if you do not get a response, well, this will be your first lesson about peer learning is that you are going to be dependent on each other. Even if you do everything right, if the people you're working with do not reciprocate, that will leave you both them and you lacking. So think about that mutual commitment, that mutual sense of responsibility to each other. Uh, you're not just in it for the course team or for your own certificate. Your ability to progress and succeed is going to be dependent on the strength of the, of the basically of the, the, the ties uh, that will bind you to each other. And the remote coffee will be one of the first times you'll experience this, but certainly not the last. Um, about the peer review, that will be explained in due time how the peer review process will work but you will be matched randomly again um, and the peer reviewers and authors will both be anonymous um, now i want to say a word on the use of whatsapp this is a message i received uh, from uh, some and wigbu um, and it reflects i think a sentiment many of you may, may be having um, about you know sort of too much noise people reporting um, the completion of assignments and I just want to say WhatsApp is optional if you're not comfortable using WhatsApp if you'd rather you know, opt out you are welcome to some people love it and some people hate it we're not going to try to restrict how people use it other than asking folks to stay on topic so anything off, the, off topic spam advertising whatever that will be grounds for removal from the whatsapp group but if people want to share that they've completed an assignment especially during orientation week those are useful signals for us to receive from the course team side and we hope they provide encouragement for other participants who ha aren't there yet to see that so many of us uh, so many of you are you know, doing very well and figuring out what you need to do and just getting it done. So I understand uh, the sentiment and I let's see if uh, Sam and Wigbu is in the room with us. Um, let me just see. Yeah, so I don't see him Im immediately. He must be a member of uh, Team Jenner. But in any case, this is a message I wanted to say about uh, oh, the WhatsApp too. group. There is a, a love it or hate it relationship. There. Um, so the other thing I wanted to emphasize with respect to support is that, yes, the course requires joining and using several platforms. Carolina has you know, alluded to that, and that can seem overwhelming at first, and you may be wondering why you have to do this. This is how we get the most highly effective learning. Is It does, to get to that result, we need to go through that. There is a learning curve associated with it. The other thing is that large volume of information can be overwhelming. So uh, what we find consistently is that wherever people are starting from, people have very different levels of abilities, but uh, people who have negative attitudes and who are just complaining and you know, uh, rather than doing something about it, rather than problem solving and just figuring out how to you know, get it, get these tools to work and make use of them. Um, also, people who do not express, you know, really solidarity with their colleagues. Um, though people with those attitudes tend not to do very well in a course that is based on peer learning um, using a, a variety of digital platforms. So if you recognize yourself in either of those and that, you know, um, do consider the change in attitudes that will be you know, without which it, you will find it difficult to progress, much less succeed um, in this uh, in this course. So that um, is what um, we wanted to share in terms of an update. The important points about the forms of support. We have not yet introduced the accompanists, but we just had our first meeting where um, 67 individuals who are alumni of previous courses, including 27. Um, participants, alumni, who have been selected for their subject matter expertise uh, by the Survey Scholar course team. Um, we have nearly 70 people who have been motivated by the kind of solidarity I was just talking about and who have um, volunteered or been selected or both to become accompanists. So we'll be telling you more about that, but accompanists are the participants, your peers, who are going to, who've already done this and who are going to be helping you get through it. So you will have not only the course team, uh, but you will also have almost 70 people 
who will be mobilized to make sure that you can progress through the course. So next, we collected over 100 questions in less than 24 hours. Carolina Danavaro and the rest of and the other subject matter experts have actually reviewed all of these questions. And Carolina has compiled this synthetic summary that I'm going to ask her to, uh, uh, to present, um, recapping you know, the content, the pieces of information that um, address the recurring themes and the most common questions uh, that you shared. Carolina? Um, hello, so these slides, again, are going to be available for you. So probably of this slide, the most important bit is that this is about vaccination coverage, uh, which is an indicator. And it's an indicator to give us an idea of how the, the immunization program is doing. So this is just for you to have as a um, reference material. And the next one. There were some questions about the different types of methodologies to try to measure vaccination coverage. And this is a, a slide adapted from material from PAHO. You can see the the link there if you want to read it in detail, and it's in the PAHO um, publications. But basically, um, this is just uh, one of the ways to measure vaccination or try to measure, estimate vaccination coverage. Uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages with all of them. So um, this is not for you to read now, but it's a little bit of a summary. The next one. We received many questions uh, from people who were familiar with earlier WHO guidance on vaccination coverage surveys or EPI surveys. And in this, uh, if you, we will ask you to please read the preface and chapter one of the, of the manual. Uh, those questions are really answered there. Um, but as a summary, um, the, one of the biggest differences is that the old EPI survey uh, was still clusters, but it assigned the um, basically you didn't know how many people each child represented and assumed that they all represented the same number. It was not a real probability based sampling. They may say something more or felicity, uh, but just to say that now it's really probability sampling as all the modern surveys are done, DHS, mix, uh, etc. The instead of having the team go to the center of the village and spin a bottle or a pen uh, now there is a pre-selection of the households to visit and and that of course has a different impact in field work but also in how you calculate the probability of selection the sample size it's tailored to what you are trying to accomplish in terms of precision we'll talk about that in the assignment one um, so there is a a whole annex on calculation of sample size, and there is a, an Excel tool for sample size calculation that it's in the WHO website. Uh, the design effect, we'll not talk about that too much, but basically some people ask whether because people live in the same house or because people live in the same neighborhood, if they are not more likely to behave the same. And the answer is yes. So um, we'll deal with that also in the, in the training that's uh, accounted for, and you can calculate um, the intracluster uh, correlation and how they are behaving the same or differently in terms of vaccination or different outcomes. The next one. So the the other last part in sampling is that before there was no attempt to revisit, uh, so we didn't know how many households were just replaced. So now it's really to keep track of the households that are selected and try to go to those households and document how many you can actually visit, interview, etc. Uh, there is no limitation of re residents. Some people ask about that. And basically, we deal with it in the analysis, basically saying if you were not vaccinated, you can determine how many of those who are not vaccinated were not living in the in the area um, in a certain period, or say the last or before three months, etc. Uh, vaccination status, as the vaccination schedules of the vaccines recommended get more and more complex with more and more vaccines recommended, there is a huge emphasis on trying to um, have documented evidence of vaccination. Some people ask many questions there on 
what about story? So sometimes the documentation will not match with the recall uh, and will give you guidance about that, what to do with that. But basically, uh, we tend to privilege what's written. Um, but if nothing is available with any written documentation, you just have a, um, the recalls and we'll talk about that. We, with the new technology, there is recommendations to take photograph of cards. And of course, there are ethical and confidentiality issues that are also dealt with. And then data entry, when the old manuals were written, there was no copy, there was not the possibility of using tablets or phones for data collection, but now there is. So there is some guidance on that. Finally, um, a lot more on survey report writing, and we'll be doing a lot of this now. Um, because some of the of the reports were very incomplete so we would not really know how the survey happened how it was done and even how the indicators were calculated so it will they, there is a lot of emphasis on that and of course a renewed emphasis on um the whole quality of the of the survey implementation um, analysis and actually dissemination um the next one Real quick, uh, I'm going to skip this one, but you can read it in, on your own. And the next up, oh, can you go back? There was one that it got deleted probably, but I wanted to emphasize that we all measure or try to estimate vaccination coverage, not because we just want coverage. So it's not the goal to have just high coverage. Our goal is to immunize people so give them good vaccines so that people are protected and and not to say that we have reached the 90 percent goal or 95 percent goal or whatever goal we set so when a measurement becomes the the goal it ceases to be a good measure so just wanted to emphasize that uh, next one of the extra replies so some people ask if there were any differences between the 2015 working draft and the and the new one, the answer is they are in content, they are very, very much the same. There is some language clarifications, a little more examples, and we will be using the 2018 one. Um, we will not be dealing with all surveys with how they were done, but if you have a survey done with the older methodology, it may not be really comparable because the biases and the, the implementation are likely to be very different. Um, so then in some settings, um, not every aspect of what's recommended can be done. So I want to think about this as the Ferrari kind of thing. But if you cannot um, do it, do the best you can. But do please document your decisions and the whys. You could not, for example, do a full probability sampling. Why you couldn't take pictures in some places, it's not uh, allowed. It's just uh, culturally not acceptable. In some places, going to the health facility is going to be easy and it's going to give you more information on the status of vaccination of children. In other places, you will never find the record, so it will be pointless. Um, so anyways, the, some other people um, ask about the, um, well, already talk about the residence requirement. Um, so there are many um, resources there. Some questions about sample size calculations, some tools for weights, differences between LQAS and this manual will be answered later. It's really long. Um, so somebody mentions, yes, that sometimes you cannot use uh, tools like the portable devices in some areas. So in those cases, you likely have to use paper. Um, Gavi requires surveys and they will be added in, in the platform. Um, they require surveys after any campaign that they help support, and they require surveys for any applications to be done uh, in, within the last five years, unless there is a, a reason not to do one. A good reason can be that coverage is so low, for example, that you may want to be focusing on vaccinating, uh, or for example, that a DHS is happening or about to happen or a mix. Therefore, uh, there is no need to do an extra one. So um, LQAS, yes, is used a lot in polio. Um, and we'll, uh, there is some talk about that uh, in the manual. 
here we will not be doing LQAS, uh, but you can use this methodology to, um, to classify particularly after campaigns. Uh, so the next one. So a specific formula about sample size calculation. Yes, there are formulas for sample size calculations in Annex B of the manual. And therefore, um, oh, that was my phrase that I had put earlier, but anyways, uh, therefore, um, the formulas are in the Annex B with a big explanations and there is an Excel tool in the WHO webpage with surveys so you can use. Um, how many Gavi eligible countries have conducted this survey is difficult to tell um, because some of them have done it for post SIA, some have done with parts of the guidance and parts not. Um, some have, are doing it so we don't have a complete list. Gavi um, compiles that so <laughs> Uh, I think that's it for me. Um, can, can you say a word about Goodhart's law? And, and, uh, I, yeah, I think I said that, that basically we, we measure coverage, but it's not because we just want to reach 90% coverage and are willing to say we reach it because we are happy when it, the number is 90. But it's really our goal is to vaccinate and immunize people. Uh, and so even though we are going for that, uh, measurement of how well we are doing, um, it's, it's really the most important. It's to keep in mind that our job is to immunize people, not to reach a certain number. So that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, and um, uh, I see many uh, additional questions in the, uh, in, in the chat. We'll be saving the chat and following up with more detailed answers. We actually, if, if for those that require it, um, in the uh, scholar community, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, to prepare and yes. Um, so um, we have been, the course team has been speaking for the last 46 minutes. There have been some really interesting comments in the chats, but that's not actually what we want to flip that on its head in the successive weeks. You will come to know that most of the time in each discussion group will be spent with you center stage presenting um, the work that you are doing in Scholar to your colleagues, with your colleagues, as well as the course team, of course, giving you feedback to give you a taste for how that this is going to work. Um, you, we would like to ask you to uh, share how you have prepared for this course. Now we are going to set a two minute timer. So you will have two minutes to summarize how you have organized your time, how you have ensured that that time will be protected and that you'll, you'll have adequate time to really dedicate to the coursework and to succeed through the uh, course. So in the GoToTrading participants panel, you will see there's a little hand icon. You can use that to raise your hand. Um, and I see Titus uh, Kolonge has actually uh, their hand raised, so as well as Boniface Isindu and Charles Akatawa B. Michael. So I don't know if this is intentional or not, but this means, uh, gentlemen and maybe uh, lady, that um, we are going to. I am going to call on you. And uh, Boniface Isindu, how are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm doing fine. I hope I'm uh, I'm clear. Do you able Great. to hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Follow, I'm delighted and I'm happy. Um, uh, really thank you for organizing for this course uh, that we can be able to share experiences. Now, straight on to the question that you've so asked. So I'm going to, yes, I'm going to set the timer. You'll have two minutes to tell us how you're really, you're making sure that you are going to su succeed. And um, let me add just, uh, just a, you, you, what are the barriers to your success and how are you going to overcome them? You know, whether that's access, you know, so two questions really, you have two minutes, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, uh, I think the best thing is uh, because you're trying to really balance this course with our daily, you know, activities, uh, I have made sure that uh, I have prepared an activity plan on uh, what I'm uh, supposed to do uh, the whole day, for example, throughout the week. Then now that I have this course, I have to make sure that I also apportion some uh, adequate time for me to be able to attend to this course. So that's it. Uh, that means that I went back to the the previous uh, five to eight hours in a week, averagely, and I was coming to about two hours uh, in a day. So I asked myself, how do I get these two hours minimum, two hours in a day? So I had to squeeze one one hour in the morning so that I, I look at the, you know my 
uh, the activities and the, the tasks so that I complete them. And then throughout the day, I can look for another probably an hour so that I can be able to, you know, to go through the materials and also go back to what we may have learned the previous day. So I can be able to, you know, there is through and be able to uh, to have the content. And then for the group work again, I, I realize that uh, you will require a lot of time to prepare. And especially if you can get the topics that uh, we will be sharing, the group work. And it's important for me again to do some kind of research. I go through the materials so that I can be able to get uh, proper content and uh, also, you know, uh, try to fine tune my content so that I can be able to share uh, with my, my, my colleagues. So basically what I'm saying is that uh, you really have to uh, factor in adequate time, probably minimally two hours or probably uh, two, three to four hours in a day so that you can also manage. And I realized that again, internet may be an issue, especially when you want to refer to the materials that have been, uh, you know, uh, online. So you really need to pick on a time that you can be able to go to the net when the, the signal is very strong. So probably I, I, what I have decided is that uh, I will be doing it in the night. Uh, thank you, Bonifas Isindu. As you can see, the timer is quite uh, cruel. Um, and when we say two minutes, uh, or in some cases, you will be making always short presentations, always under time pressure, but then maybe three or five minutes as we move through the course. Uh, let's hear. Thank you. Uh, and for those of you listening, think about how you're organizing your time, how you're going to make sure that, for example, if you thought you would have two hours, but you'd something urgent comes up, how you're going to fight off the urge to deal with that urgency before before you have completed uh, your uh, tasks. Let's go to uh, Ananya Biswasa. Uh, Ananya, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Great. Can you tell us where, where you're connecting from? And um, uh, yeah. I am connecting from the city of Hyderabad, uh, India. Am I, uh, am I audible? Yes, Do loud and clear. Yep. OK, thank you so much for this opportunity, first of all. Uh, so I guess I can, I'm ready for the timer. <laughs> Okay, uh, timer is starting now. The floor is yours. Yes, yeah, so as I was typing, I mean, I just dropped in the middle of that. I guess we most of us are on the same page regarding dedicating at least one to two hours over the entire working week and uh, uh, much more time over the weekends. Uh, I feel one of the personal challenges that I feel might drop off for me was is the fact that I'm using a company system right now and I have to move it to my personal system so the software that my I was able to access easily might be compromised but nonetheless I always have SPSS to go back to but uh, regarding that I think all of us can have a little bit of prior preparation in case we need to get any softwares or something but apart from that my strategy uh, is to obviously first of all uh, get that coffee remote coffee meal I'm kind of really excited for it sounds like a really new concept and uh, obviously one to two hours every day and um, apart from that weekends more intensive and more dedicated work hours. I think you can close my timer and that's all I have to say. Okay thank you and that is allowed as well <laughs> so thank you uh, Anyana Biswas uh, thank you. All right um, let's hear from uh, now so the one thing that I cannot tell is the order in which people you know, uh, raise their hand. And I apologize for that. It's a limitation of the system. You'll see in the future discussion groups, we'll use a different uh, a different approach. We'll ask you to write into the chat that when you want to present. So that way we can see, uh, in some cases, we, we will be respecting the order in which hands uh, were raised. So let me pick from uh, someone from the uh, bottom of the list or towards the middle. Let's go to Paul Konka. Uh, Paul Konka, you'll need to unmute yourself. And then uh, we'd love to hear from you about how you are uh, preparing for this uh, uh, for this course? All right, Paul is not responding, so uh, you'll need to, you do need to unmute yourself. Let's go to um, a representative of uh, I'm I am guessing the uh, uh, Nigerian uh, delegation to this uh, course, Olo Runfemi Omo Tosho. Um, are you able to uh, hear me? And can you uh, tell us uh, where you're connecting from and introduce yourself before we set the timer on you? Okay, thank you, Reda. I can hear you clearly. Hope you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Yes, I'm calling from Ileife, Oshun State, Nigeria. Okay, welcome. And um, the timer is starting now. Okay, thank you. I think for me, I've been able to plan out some survival strategies. I think based on the kind of work I do, for my work schedule, I'm most times busy between 10 and 4. 
and for looking at the outline of the course, I've been able to plan putting out two hours per day. One preferably early in the morning, between 4 and 6 a.m., and the other hour uh, late in the evening, between 8 and 10 p.m. Why I chose this is that I found, since this is an online course, for my experience for internet connection here in Ile Ife, most times the internet speeds are usually faster, usually early in the mornings and late at night. So since I'll be doing most of my work online, so that's why I chose that earlier, so that I won't have internet issues early in the morning. I can go through the course. Then if I have other things I need to work on, then also in the evenings, I'll be able to do that. And also I've been able to tease out some other programs so that the next six weeks, my work schedule will be a bit light, even though I can't rule out manual situations for my superiors. Well, by and large, I feel I should be able to cope. And another thing that I feel will be a distraction during this period is the walk off. For me, I'm a football enthusiast, but I think even with the timing I've chosen, most of the games will be outside those period, and I think I'll be able to cope. But by and large, so far, so good. It's been a nice time, and I believe I'll be able to gain more as the course progresses. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Olo Runfemi. Um, all right, and then under two minutes as well. So um, this is a very, uh, uh, very uh, concise uh, group, and this is much appreciated, I believe, by the course team. Let's go now to Mohamed Jamil Saleh. Uh, Mohamed, how are you doing? And uh, are you able to tell us and speak to us? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, Where are you connecting from, I'm Doctor? Uh, I'm connecting from Nigeria. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. The floor is yours. The timer starts now. Okay. Um, I think, um, first of all, to be able to succeed in anything, there is most definitely a need for determination and discipline. And I think this is uh, one of the survival strategies I've been using all through the time I've, I've uh, taken part in most of the online courses. And also experience, since I've taken courses a lot from Coursera, um, I've actually planned on um, having two hours every morning because I usually used to wake up every day around five o'clock. So I would take like two hours, five to seven, and then also maybe in the evenings when I'm back from work. And I think the things I've done is to prioritize activities and also um, look at those activities that I can actually change the timing, which I've done. And um, also, I revisited my schedule, my normal schedule, which I think will help me to balance and fit in to succeed in the course. Uh, and I also, despite the uh, reminders that have been set by the course, I have my own plans to actually set reminders on deadlines and to be able to meet up with each and every exercise and that I will want to take part in doing. Uh, and I hope that um, by the special grace of God, I'll be able to scale through and put in my very best to succeed in the course. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mohamed Jamil Saleh. All right, um, I'm going now to turn back to the course team. We're almost out of time um, to close this first uh, orientation week discussion group. And um, back to you, uh, Carolina, Dale, Felicity, and John. So thank you, everyone. Uh, many questions, many uh, a lot of interaction. So. Uh, the material will be there for you to review these slides so you will know who are the accompanists, basically people who have done scholar before. Uh, then we will be ready to help you if you help yourself. So, so it's up to you. Uh, it's a challenge, but it's going to be fun and we're going to be learning together. So let's get it done and the next six weeks we'll be in this together. See ya. Thank you, Carolina. Now, um, we, we that leaves Dale, Felicity, and John. Hi, guys. Thanks very much. Your, your dedication is impressive. We are enthusiastic because of your enthusiasm, and we're looking forward to a uh, great uh, back and forth and great, um, yeah, great in interchange of knowledge. So thanks very much for your enthusiasm. Uh, as everyone's been saying, take the commitment seriously and get as much out of it as you can. Thanks. Uh, this is Felicity, so I, I won't repeat what's already been said. Just uh, possibly lastly, we, we do understand the frustration that can arise from uh, technical difficulties. 
uh, especially in, um, in particular parts of the world, and we, we really understand it. But there will always be backup solutions. Uh, materials will be available via other means, and everyone's ready to help um, to overcome those, uh, those difficulties. Okay, for me, it's uh, to say that uh, it's nice to meet you all. And then uh, one thing that we must know is there's uh, very little flexibility in the course. It's uh, an intensive course to add to a very demanding uh, daily activities. However, we understand and uh, the faculty understands that th there are circumstances that will uh, make you uh, miss some of the courses. So we will try to the best of knowledge, uh, to the best of our ability, uh, accommodate that, but kindly communicate uh, if you will not be able to join in the sessions or join in the discussions, and we will see how this is uh, this can be accommodated. However, having said that, uh, the course is tight, uh, and uh, the demands of both from your side and from our side is, is high, and so and it's only six weeks, so let us try to uh, be able to borrow from the strategies that have been shared, uh, keep some time, and go uh, through the course. And hopefully, all of us will be able to uh, graduate come six weeks. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, John Wagai, Felicity Katz, Dale Roda, and Carolina uh, Danavaro. Uh, thank you all, 167 of you who were able to join. So we got nearly a full house for the uh, 20, uh, yes, um, for the 34 uh, or so who will be uh, viewing the recording. We um, appreciate your efforts and look forward to seeing uh, the completion of your catch-up task in the community. In this way, you will be able to uh, contribute no matter what um, problems prevented you from attending this uh, inaugural uh, orientation session. So thank you.